Right, so I have a set of uh, capacitors here that are that were in my work area and um, as you can see it's a, diff a variety of capacitors. Uh, the capacitors were here for one reason or another maybe I was working on a project or something of the sort and I left them on the table and didn't get around to reshelving them back into my cabinet. Now the thing is some capacitors actually are pretty easy to figure out what the values are. The values are written somewhere on there as you can see with this one. Okay, But there are others where the value is not very obvious. You may have to go through some sort of a code or figure out or remember a code in order to be able to uh, file them away. And so what we're going to do in this episode here as soon as we run the credits is we're going to go back and look at some of the different codes or the code that we need in order to file, you know, certain capacitors like this one into our filing cabinet. And we'll do that right after we come back from the introduction. Okay, so when a capacitor is large enough, it's easy to show the important characteristics related to that uh, capacitor on the outside. So for example, let's take a look at this capacitor here. You'll notice that there are some numbers that are written on here along with some letters. So as you can see, 50 V, and so what that stands for is the rated voltage of the capacitor, and that is the maximum voltage that should be across the capacitor's legs. In addition to that, you'll notice the capacitor also has 100 microfarads. That is the amount of capacitance for this capacitor. And you'll also notice a little negative sign there. And what that indicates is that this capacitor is bipolar or what's sometimes called polarized. Take, for example, a second capacitor here. This capacitor, you'll notice, has a set of numbers, again, letters, and BP. On this capacitor, because there's enough space on it, again, we can, we can tell here that the rated voltage for this capacitor is 50 volts by just reading the capacitor. We can also tell that the capacitance for this capacitor is 10 microfarads. And we can also tell from this capacitor, because of the BP written on here, that this is a bipolar or polarized capacitor. When capacitors have a limited amount of space on them, like for instance, this ceramic uh, capacitor here, what happens is many manufacturers put a code or codes on capacitors in order to tell the user what their characteristics are. So let's discuss some of these codes. So first, we'll look at the codes related to the capacitance value and the tolerance. So if you remember the capacitor that we were looking at before, in the middle, there were three numbers and then a letter. Those three numbers will tell us what the capacitance value is and then also what the tolerance is. The first two numbers indicate what the first two digits or the leftmost digits are for the capacitor. And then the third digit, tells us what the multiplier is. So ter third digit tells us what the multiplier is. The last letter that was there on the right side in the middle of that capacitor we looked at previously tells us the tolerance for that capacitor. So let's use this table here, which tells us both the multiplier and the tolerance information and we'll use that in order to decode what the capacitor value is of the capacitor that we looked at previously, which is this one, 104Z. So the 10 indicates the first two digits of our capacitor value. The 4 indicates that the multiplier, we we're going to be multiplying by 10,000, 
And by the way, I should mention also that typically when it comes to capacitor values without the farads uh, written on it, those capacitors are understood to be in the, or the units for those capacitors are understood to be picofarads. So in the case of this capacitor, it's one zero, which came from here. And then four zeros for the multiplier. So that's 10 times 10,000 picofarads, which turns out to be 100 picofarads, or it's the equivalent of 100 nanofarads, which is the same as 0.1 microfarads. The Z, as we indicated before, had, it was related to the tolerance. And the Z in this case means that the capacitance value can be anywhere from plus 80% of the capacitance value written on the capacitor to minus 20% of the capacitor value that's written on the capacitor. So in total, our capacitor or the final capacitor value is 100 nanofarads plus 80% to minus 20% for the tolerance. What happens when we have a capacitor that doesn't have anything more than a number written on it? Well, we, we will read that value very similar to the previous one that we looked at. So in the case of this, four is understood to be, or interpreted to be, zero four, because we have no multiplier that's on here, then that is understood to be zero four zero. So in other words, there's zero, uh, multiplier related to this capacitor. And so the final value for this capacitor then is four times one picofarad. And so this is so this is a four picofarad capacitor. Okay, so because this capacitor has no tolerance letter or no letter indicating what the tolerance is, therefore then this capacitor is understood to be to have a tolerance of plus my plus or minus 20%. This means our final value for this capacitor then is a, a four picofarad capacitor plus or minus 20% for the tolerance. Similar to the codes established for capacitance values and tolerances, there is also a code established to express the rated voltage for a capacitor. Looking at this table, this table gives you the codes and the voltages associated with those codes. For the previous capacitor, you'll you remember that that code had 2A, and so the voltage related to that code is written here. So this is the maximum or the rated voltage for that capacitor. Now going back to our capacitor again, remember it's 2A that's written here. And so the rated voltage is 100 volts. Going back to the capacitance now, remember our code from before where we were talking about capacitance values. 104 means that we have one and zero, which are the first two digits, and then four zeros or multiply by 10,000. And remember for capacitors without the units uh, given, the, the farads given, we, it's understood that those capacitors, the units is in picofarads. And so 10 times the 10,000 then gives us 100,000 picofarads, which is equal to 100 nanofarads or 0.1 microfarads. So for this capacitor, we also have the value of K here. And if you remember from our previous code, that gave us a capacitance tolerance of plus or minus 100, or pardon me, 10%. And so our final value for this capacitor, then it's a 100 nanofarad capacitor with a tolerance of plus or minus 10% with a rated voltage of 100 volts. Let's take a look at another capacitor with a similar code. So this one also has a, a voltage, or pardon me, it also has a voltage rating of 2A. So that means then that we have 100 volts based on our code, our previous code. And for the rest of the capacitor, the capacitance value is 47. The first two digits is 47. And then we have a two, so then that's 47 times 100. That's our multiplier. 
and the value remember is given in picofarads if no units are given so then that turns out to be 4700 picofarads which is the same as 4.7 nanofarads and for the k we have a tolerance of plus or minus 10 percent and so our final value for this capacitor is 4.7 nanofarads with a plus or minus 10 percent tolerance and a rated voltage of 100 volts You may recognize this capacitor from earlier. You may have also realized that I did not talk about the codes at the top and at the bottom of the capacitor. The code at the bottom of the capacitor is related to the manufacturer's name. The code at the top is related to temperature crack characteristics for the capacitor. Let's take a closer look at the temperature characteristics. It's important to note that ceramic uh, commercial capacitors or commercial ceramic capacitors can actually be placed in two main classes. Now there are more than two, but for the most part we can label most of the ones that, for instance, a hobbyist may encounter in two main classes. They are class one and class two. Class one ceramic capacitors offer high stability and low losses for let's say resonant type circuit applications. Whereas class two ceramic capacitors offer high volumetric efficiency for smoothing by bypass, coupling and decoupling applications. Now that we understand that there's two main categories, let's go ahead and look at the different ways that the temperature characteristics are coded. Okay, so let's look at the temperature characteristics code for class one ceramic capacitors. If you look at your capacitor and you have one of these codes or these codes, which are made up from the EIA or the IEC, then you know you're dealing with a class one temperature characteristic uh, capacitor. If it has one of these codes, let's say the COG or CG, what that means is this. It means that you will have, or that capacitor has, a zero capacitance drift with a tolerance of plus or minus 30 parts per million for every Kelvin change uh, in temperature. Now for class two ceramic capacitors, um, there's actually two different codes that have been developed, one by the EIA, or at least two prominent codes, by EIA and the IEC. Now, since there's two different codes, I'm going to actually focus specifically on the EIA uh, because the capacitors I have in my collection are have, or at least carry those codes. So, focusing on the class two uh, temperature characteristics codes table that we have here on the screen, you'll notice that the, uh, there's a letter code for low temperature, there's a code for high temperature, and then there's a code for the change in capacitance over temperature and time. So if we look at the code here, and let's say we pick these three letters or three, these three uh, characters, Z5U, what this means then is that the capacitor then that has this code will operate at a plus uh, from a plus 10 degrees Celsius to a plus 85 degrees Celsius uh, with a capacitance change of at most plus 22% to minus 56% in terms of the capacitance. Okay, so going back to our previous capacitor here, you'll notice that this capacitor has a code of Y5V written on it. And so that's our uh, the code related to the temperature characteristics. And that Y5Z then, in, uh, based on our table, says that Y is our lower end is minus 30 degrees Celsius. Our upper end temperature is plus 85 degrees Celsius. And the V means then that we have a plus 22 to minus 82 uh, percent change in the capacitance. So therefore, this class two capacitor with a Y5V code will operate from minus 30 degrees Celsius to plus 85 degrees Celsius with a capacitance change 
of at most plus 22% to minus 82%. Okay, so the information that has been given in this um, tutorial, if you will, on how to read capacitor values is it should just be used as a beginning for reading capacitor values. There's a lot more um, codes out there. And I do encourage you to look through those uh, different codes um, because you may encounter some of those codes in some capacitors that you uh, run across in your hobby or as a uh, engineer.